This is Dave McCain with the Right Tree Genealogy doing a Friday update on the Discover More, particularly the Time Tree. There's been so much discussion on it. I wanted to go straight in to show you what I see today and how to really interpret it as an admin. Uh, and I'm using my father's account for the example. Let's go over there. So I went into the Discover More and this is uh, the terminal snip that my father and I have. Uh, this is what you would normally see if I go into the scientific data. The date hasn't changed anything as of this morning. Nothing changed here. So let's go to the time tree. Now on my time tree, this is a, a live presentation of it. I'm actually in dad's kit. It's not slides. My terminal snip is FTA47557. The McCain area, which I've talked about before in other videos, is the FT294408. And uh, it gives, if you hover over top of it, you see basically a corresponding time frame when they think this could have been formed based on the confidence interval of 95%. Same thing here. So this is my father's and self-reported earliest known ancestor, uh, paternal country of the United States. And here's, this is me. And the reason I know this is my father was born uh, between well, 1924 and I was born in uh, a little later than that, <laughs> uh, mid-century, let's say. Now, here's where the big debate's been coming into play. The date ranges of 1792 to uh, 1977. So from here to here is the date range for this SNP. Well, this SNP overlaps it. It doesn't surpass it, but it overlaps it. And people get confused on what this is. So let's take a quick look at what you should, how you should look at this particular table. The mean is what I tell everybody to look at at this point. Focus on the mean, and that kind of defines each SNP backwards in time, regardless if there's an overlap. Overlap is a statistical number. So let's take a quick look at something here. This is the block tree. The FT4, uh, FTA 47557 being my terminal SNP is in this block here. This is my branch. We break out each one of them with few, very few number of testers. If you have each individual SNP separated out, like I do here, one here, one here, one here, that's great because it's easier to define or tighten what you would expect the mean to be and actually the 95% confidence. However, you notice I have two SNPs here, one here, two here, and three here. What that is telling us is you're seeing a date range on the time tree simply representing that whole block. It's not representing that particular SNP. It could be, but if there's two or more in a block, it could be either one of them that is the most recent and the other one further back. That is important when you're looking at a time tree. The time tree, this time tree represents one of the SNPs in a block. Since it only represents one, looking at this here, yeah, there's one here, great. One here, great. One here, great. But reality, there's actually two right here. If you went into this one, if you click it and went into it and went to scientific data on that one, you'll see that there are actually two SNPs at that FT29222. Since there are two here, you're seeing a representation uh, time frame that covers both of them from the beginning of one to backwards to the beginning of the second one. And we're talking, it could be two, three generations. So they're covering a, a wider span there. So when you're looking at one of these, you got to understand that they're, they, just because they overlap, they overlap and they go beyond what the other one is. That's just, again, statistics. It has nothing to do with what it really is. If a SNP was formed in me and I passed it to a son, then it could be no earlier than me since it was formed in me. Same thing with each one of these. Each one of these represent an individual. If we're able to find a tester to break these two that I just showed a few moments ago, break the two that are here, then what you're going to see is 
one of the two is going to slide back in time the other one's going to be closer to time with this one if you are a tester in ftdna you need to key in your birth date it will help them as they're developing the beta i've actually put mine in but as of right now the the beta is not showing it as the actual date and it may or may not going forward i'm hearing rumbles both ways let's see what family tree dna does here but here's where people are really having the most issue uh, i'm going to step it back one more here for the moment is when you have a situation where a date range exceeds the date range of its predecessor a lot of people are having trouble with this understand this is statistics this is a range whenever you're looking at a statistic of probabilities it's a range of dates it does not mean that this snip was formed after ft263466 it simply means that this is tighter the data is tighter for this one than the estimate for this one. If we knew exactly who this individual was and his exact birthday, as the beta goes forward, this would not surpass this one. My point here in showing this time tree is focus on the mean. Whenever you look at one, whatever that mean is, use that as your best guess unless you have the exact number. This is still beta. The more testers we have in an area, the tighter those that statistics is going to be as of now there's going to be a range focus on the mean thank you for watching this video please consider subscribing right here or watching some of these other videos let's continue learning together